Tim and Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from Italy. Pope Francis made a day-long visit to the northern Italian port city of Genoa over the weekend. Pope's visit included stops at a steel plant, the city's cathedral to speak with priests and religious, a Marian shrine to meet with young people, lunch with homeless, and a visit to a pediatric hospital, and finally mass with about 100,000 people. Rome Report says more from the mass to conclude the day in Genoa. Almost 100,000 Genoese welcomed Pope Francis into Kennedy Square with traditional and very detailed crucifixes. It was this mass that concluded a brief but intense visit to Liguria. In his homily, the Pope said that it's necessary to allow God to enter into the daily life of each person, despite daily stresses and pressures. As a solution, he proposed that one must find time to pray and confide their concerns to God. Vivendo sempre tra tante corse e cosa da fare, ci possiamo smarrire. Ricordiamoci ogni giorno di gettare l'ancora in Dio. Affidiamogli tutto. E questa è la forza della preghiera che collega cielo e terra, che permette a Dio di entrare nel nostro tempo. On the other hand, he recalled that Christians must confront evangelization and the problems of today's world with a more active perspective. He said that Christians should be less self-centered and instead be prepared to work for the common good. Chiediamo al Signore la grazia di non fossilizzarci su questioni non centrali, ma di dedicarci pienamente all'urgenza della missione. Lasciamo ad altri le chiacchiere e le finte discussioni di chi ascolta solo se stesso. At the end of the ceremony, Genoa bid Pope Francis farewell with traditional songs of the region. The Pope was also able to greet his relatives from northern Italy, the location where his father and grandparents were from, before emigrating to Argentina almost 90 years ago. Looking now at news from the Vatican, after a 36-minute meeting with Pope Francis at the Vatican, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau told reporters that he asked the Pope to help Canadians move forward on real reconciliation with the country's indigenous people by issuing an apology on behalf of the Catholic Church for its role in harming their communities. The Prime Minister said that the Pope told him that he looked forward to working with him and the Canadian bishops to figure out a path forward together. The 2015 report of Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which focused on the past treatment of the indigenous communities, recommended the Pope come to Canada to apologize on behalf of the Church for its participation in the residential schools for indigenous children. The, idea, the original idea for the schools was to promote integration of indigenous communities into modern Canadian life. However, the schools, many run by religious orders, led to a situation where many children were torn from their families, lost their native language and cultures, and often suffered abuse. The Prime Minister told reporters he had invited the Pope to Canada in the coming years, but added there were no further details on a possible visit. More news now from the Vatican. Pope Francis has appointed a new vicar for the Diocese of Rome. He will place the retiring current vicar, Cardinal Agostino Vellini, on June 29th. Rome reports has more on the new vicar. Pope Francis has appointed Angelo de Donati's vicar for Rome after accepting the renunciation of Cardinal Agostino Vellini for this position. This is an important appointment because he is one of the Pope's main collaborators and will now be in the public eye. He is 63 years old and less than two years ago he was pastor of a church in the center of the city. When he was in charge of the spiritual care of priests, he delivered the first Lenten retreat for Pope Francis in March 2014. A year and a half later, in November 2015, Pope Francis named him Auxiliary Bishop of Rome. Si, lo voglio. He now becomes one of the leading leaders of the Catholic Church in Italy and one of the most heard in the world. 
The papal appointment automatically elevates the Auxiliary Bishop of Rome to Archbishop and includes serving as Grand Chancellor of Rome's Pontifical Lateran University and Archpriest of the Basilica of St. John Lateran, the Cathedral Church of the Rome Diocese. The papal vicar governs the Diocese of Rome in the name of the Pope. He exercises most of the powers of a local bishop and presides over a vicariate with most of the usual offices found in the chancery of a large archdiocese, including offices for personnel, religious education, and ecumenism. And finally in the news, prayers are flowing in from around the world for the victims of an horrific attack in Egypt that left at least 26 people killed, many of whom were children. Three cars carrying masked gunmen attacked a bus May 26th, carrying Coptic Orthodox Christians on the way to St. Samuel Monastery in southern government of Minya, a traditional stronghold of Egypt's Christian community, which accounts for a tiny percent of the country's mostly Sunni Muslim population. Cardinal Pietro Paralin, Vatican Secretary of the State, sent a message to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi expressing Pope Francis's prayers and solidarity after the barbaric attack. The message went on to say that the Pope assures the grieving families of those killed and all who have been injured of his ardent prayers, and he pledges his continued intercession for peace and reconciliation throughout the nation. The attack marked the latest in a series of deadly attacks on Coptic Christians. On April 9th, two suicide bombers attacked St. George's Cathedral in Egypt's northern city of Tata and St. Mark's Cathedral in the coastal city of Alexandria. Those attacks killed and maimed dozens in what was the deadliest attack against Christians in Egypt's recent history. A nationwide state of emergency has been in place since. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.